Hi everyone, this is Aurora Monroe and I just wanted to give you an update on additional information that I found in regards to the Fort Calhoun nuclear plant as of Monday, it's uh, June 27th, 2011. Um, one article that I found, it's coming from the uh, Huffington Post green and this article uh, states that the Fort Calhoun nuclear plant flood seeps into turbine building at Nebraska news station. Let's see here. The Missouri River flood water seeped into the turbine building at a nuclear power plant near Omaha on Monday, but plant officials said that the seepage was expected and no, imposed no safety risk because the building contains no nuclear material. An eight-foot tall water field temporary berm protecting the plant collapsed early Sunday. Vendor workers were at the plant Monday to determine whether the 2,000-foot berm can be repaired. Omaha Public Power District spokesman Jeff Hansen said pumps were handling the problem at the Fort Calhoun nuclear station and that everything is secure and safe. The plant, about 20 miles north of Omaha, had been closed for refueling since April. Hansen said the berm's collapse didn't affect the shutdown or the spent fuel pool cooling. Let's see here. Now, you can think what you want about this article, but, you know, them keep saying, oh, calm down, there's no harm. Yeah, this is going wrong, but it's okay. That's going wrong, but it's just fine. And I'm sure that we'll continue to see more of this because the nuclear industry is one that uh, apparently loves to lie to people to keep its profits high. But um, certain things you just really can't cover up, and hopefully with so many different people uh, covering this and, and trying to find correct information, um, they won't get away with it this time. That's the only thing that I can hope. Now, I went to f try to find information on something else that I had asked about yesterday in regards to the fuel that's required in order to run these said pumps that they say are working. I went to the nrc.gov website and there's an event notif notification on here for Fort Calhoun for the 26th which was yesterday and it says off-site notification due to petroleum release to the Missouri River at approximately 125 the aqua dam providing enhanced flood protection for Fort Calhoun station unit 1 failed this resulted in approximately 100 gallons of petroleum being released into the river after a protective barrier was breached and many fuel containers were washed out to the river. The fuel oil containers were staged around the facility to supply fuel for the pumps which remove water within the flood containment barriers. Hmm, you see a correlation there as to why water got in uh, as far as the other article is concerned? So yeah, another lie. I'm not saying that they lost all ability to pump water out, but I'm just saying that everything is not totally hunky-dory as they're trying to make us believe. Um, in terms of, let's see here. Oh, here's an interesting article that I found about Fort Calhoun, and, I, and I'll explain to you why. This article is actually praising the NRC for its action at Fort Calhoun, meaning um, last year they went and, and saw some things that were not correct and corrected them on it and they complied with it, we hope. But that still remains to be seen. Anyhow, it says here that the Union of Concerned Scientists often complains about Nuclear Regulatory Commission inaction. The agency's failure to enforce its regulations prohibiting unmonitored and uncontrolled releases of radioactively contaminated water. The agency's tolerance of four dozen reactors operating in violation of fire protection regulations and so on. Today, we commend the NRC in action. Flood waters in Nebraska have reached the Fort Calhoun nuclear plant. But whatever threat flooding poses to the plant, that risk is lower today due to actions taken last year by the NRC. During their routine inspections of weather protection readiness in 2010, the NRC's inspectors found a commitment in the plant's design and licensing reports stating that a vital safety equipment located in the auxiliary building would be protected against a flood rising to 1,014 feet above mean sea level. Let's stop right there. 
I read a report yesterday saying that the uh, floodwaters in Omaha, Nebraska, near the plant, have already reached 1,007 feet. So if you like, you can go and check into that and see what the waters actually are now. But according to what I read, we only have 7 feet to go before they're at sea level. And keep that in mind when I read this next part. Okay. It says, the NRC's inspectors determined that the plant's design did not fulfill this commitment. In fact, the NRC estimated that, that, that there was a 100% chance of reactor core damage caused by a flood rising above 1,010 feet. The table at the top of figure 1 provides the NRC's assessment of the flooding risk, while the table at the bottom provides the results from the risk assessment by Fort Calhoun Station. The company contested the NRC's estimate. Its calculation showed that the chance of core meltdown was merely 19% for floods above 1,010 feet and up to and including 1,010.8 feet. I don't even understand what .8 has to do with anything. Okay, it's still almost a foot. Um, anyhow, and only 23.9% for floods above 1,010.8 feet to 1,014 feet. So if this is true with the 1,010 feet, we only have three more feet left if the 1,007 um, amount that I read is totally correct. I'll put a link to this so you can check out the risk assessment. Um, but the NRC said last year that if they had issues with flooding, that it would only take 110 feet in order for there to cause a 100% chance. Here it is, 100% chance of reactor core damage. All right, so you can check into that. Also, let's see if they have anything. Let's see, color codes, and no, we're not going to get into all of that. Yeah, they gave it a yellow rating as far as violation goes. Yeah, this is, you know, it's, it's really ridiculous, everything that's going on and how they're trying to lull us to sleep and say, oh, everything is okay. And I just, I really don't believe that uh, they're going to be truthful with us in the event that it's not. I'm not saying it's already bad, but I'm saying that if in the event it escalates, I just truly don't believe that we're going to get the information that we need. So therefore, I'm choosing to take it upon myself to stay on top of it in the first place so that I'm not caught unawares. All right, that's that. Oh, these are things in regards to... Uh, Fukushima and the health effects. Well, I can go into that on this video. Uh, the Fukushima residents urine is now radioactive. It says more than, oh, and this is from the Japan Times today on the 27th. Oh my goodness. Um, more than three millisieverts of radiation has been measured in the urine of 15 Fukushima residents of the village of the Tat on the town of Kawamata. Confirming internal radiation exposure, it was learned Sunday. Both are about 30 to 40 kilometers from the Fukushima number 1 power plant, which has been releasing radioactive material into the environment since the week of March 11th. All right. Now, some goofy doctor named uh, <laughs> Nanao Kamada said, This won't be a problem if they don't eat the vegetables or other products that are contaminated. For real? Duh. What about the milk? What about the water? What about anything else? If you're talking about the vegetables are contaminated, what else is possibly contaminated? And what about breathing air? I mean, I think every human being has to do a little bit of that from time to time. So this, this doctor is just totally goofy. Um, and he also further states, but it would be difficult for people to continue living in these areas. Okay. Down here it states that radioactive cesium was found both times in each resident. They only took urine samples from 15 people between 4 and 77. Now, remember up here it said that it had been found in the urine of 15 people. So, in other words, 100% of people that were tested, only 15 of them, all 100 found you had more than 3 millisieverts of radiation. I don't even understand why they would conduct such a lame study. Anyway, 15 people does not a research study make. And that's probably more insulting to the people that live there than not. Because what about everyone else? Who are these 15 people? Why did you choose them? It, it's just, it, it really, 
it makes you want to ask more questions than it could ever be answered here. Um, the article further goes on to state that uh, radioactive iodine was logged as high as 3.2 millisieverts in six people in the first survey, but none was found in the second survey. The data indicate accumulated external exposure was between 4.9 and 13.5 millisieverts, putting the grand total between 4.9 to 14.2 millisieverts over about two months. The figures did not exceed the maximum 20 millisieverts a year, but we want residents to use these results to make decisions to move, said Kamada. Um, one more article in regards to health effects that I came across. Uh, this article has been uh, posted at, at several different locations across the web if you look for it. But it says here, radiation in Japan, chronic nosebleeds, diarrhea, lack of energy in children in Koryama City, Fukushima. What's happening to the children in Koryama City and Fukushima right now? Nosebleed, diarrhea, lack of energy, effective radiation unknown, says the doctor. On June 12th, a nonprofit organization called the Bridge to Chernobyl, what an ironic name, held a free clinic in Koryama City in Fukushima Prefecture, 50 kilometers west from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Worried about the effect of radiation exposure, 50 families brought their children to see the doctor. A 39-year-old mother of two told the doctor that her six-year-old daughter had nosebleeds every day for three weeks in April. For one week, the daughter bled copiously from both nostrils. The mother said their doctor told her it was just a seasonal allergy from pollen. That is utterly ridiculous. I've never ever heard of anything like that and even if it was what did the doctor do in order to try to to prevent that nobody goes around for three whole weeks because of allergies with blood streaming out of their nose out of both nostrils she would have been better off doing a Google search on it bless her heart that's just stupid okay anyway um, <laughs> sorry mini rant alert the mother said her doctor told her it was just a seasonal allergy from pollen her other child, a two-year-old son, had nosebleeds from the end of April to May. I feel so badly for the people who are, are staying there. Um, the pe pediatrician from the Bridge to Chernobyl, Eureka Hashimoto, told the mother it was hard to determine whether the nosebleed was a result of radiation exposure, but they should have the blood test done for white blood cells. It was important to keep record, the doctor advised. The family moved out of uh, temporarily from Koryama City to Saitama Prefecture after the March 11th quake but came back to Koryama at the end of March. The mother said about 10% of pupils at the elementary school have left Koryama. Each school in Koryama decides whether to have pupils drink local milk at the school uh, that the school provides which tends to concentrate radioactive materials. Wow. In her daughter's school, it's up to parents to decide, but the mother said she let the daughter drink milk with the other children because the daughter didn't want to get excluded by the other children for not drinking milk with them. Well, she's six years old. I got my own opinions about that. Um, peer pressure to, to drink radioactive milk at six years old, I don't believe that's that child's decision. In any event, that's her mother. I can't go against what her mother says she thought was right. But this is utterly ridiculous. Um, they have, you know, so many stories that are not being told here. Every time we do get a little piece of a story from other independent persons going in here doing any kind of medical testing or work, it's always negative. There's never been a report saying, yes, we tested these people, but there's absolutely nothing wrong. We didn't find any high levels of radiation, and now everything has been proven to be fine. We have not had that kind of article. If there is that kind of article, please pass it on to me because I'd love to see it at this point. I'd, I'd absolutely love to see something positive like that, but I just I haven't found it. Um, that's going to be all that I'm going to talk about um, for now. Again, if, if you have any articles that you have have found that you found interesting i i can check them out if you like me to and maybe do something on there um and, and let me just say this before i go i'm really not here to convince anyone of anything these are all my personal opinions i'm just trying to give up this information if you you know need information you can take it or leave it okay um i've already received a couple of messages from people trying to 
push their own views on me about there's nothing going wrong and why are you going to sensationalize this. Okay, that's your opinion, dude. If if you feel like everything is fine, go off and skip into the radioactive glow. Be my guest, but that's not the way I choose to do things. Trust me, I'm not a sensationalist. Very down to earth, very calm, very rational. But this right here is not something that I feel that I can afford to be calm and rational about to that degree or complacent rather I am calm and rational but I am not complacent in this I will check into it and I will pass on the information to whomever feels that this information is good for them so with that it's an Aurora Monroe and I will see you next time thank you